All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am on a very special lake to me. Um, this right here is a, a pond in, in Northern Connecticut that uh, I grew up on. It is by far the most important fishery of my life because this is where I learned how to love to bass fish. Uh, the first fish that I remember, the first bass I remember ever catching was on this lake. It was like a three pound smallmouth. I may have caught you know some, some bass prior to that, but that was the one that I remember and that really just lit the fire um, and you know ever since I've spent thousands of hours out here um, every time we we got to come here for the summertime um, I would I would just be out here non-stop and learning different techniques and and all that so my professional fishing career started right here and you know one thing I've learned about fishing small ponds like this over the years is that keeping it simple is probably the most important principle right so you know it's it's hard not to keep it simple out here because I mean as you can see I'm not in my Phoenix bass boat I'm in this little aluminum boat that I've had ever since I was a kid it's actually not ours it's a family friends but uh, I've been using this ever since I was just a little kid and so I don't have like a lot of, of tackle storage on this boat and not a whole lot of room to, to keep tackle so keeping it simple as far as my fishing techniques has always been important and yeah I've tried a lot of different Different techniques I learned a lot of techniques that I use on tour nowadays uh, right here in this lake but there's really a couple that stand out and that I, f I I you know reach for you know every time I go fishing out here nowadays and so you know I get a lot of questions from people that are either beginners or they want to take their kids fishing and so they're looking for the 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 simple options that are going to help them just catch fish that the techniques that just flat out catch fish and are very, very productive and easy to use. So I wanted to share with you um, two of the, the, the setups that I use whenever I'm, I'm fishing a small pond like this. Um, you know, this is a, th this, this pond in particular, you know, it gets out to around 15 feet of water. Generally, the fish don't go any deeper than like 12 feet. Um, you know, it is a natural lake, so it's, it's fairly clear. It's got good submergent vegetation on the bottom but it doesn't have like a lot of vegetation that grows up towards the surface it does have emergent vegetation on the edges of the, of the shoreline but for the most part it's free and clear of a lot of you know clutter or, or cover that you can get snagged on so you know I do have one of these techniques that is very weedless and the other one that is probably my favorite not so weedless but let's get in position here essentially what I'm fishing today Day is just this large rock flat it's always produced ever since I was a little kid it goes out to about 10 or 12 feet of water and uh, and it, you know the 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 rock flat ends up you know stopping and, and some grass kind of starts so there's a little bit of a grass line so let's get in a position right here and the very first technique that I want to show you is one that I harp on all the time. And if people, if somebody that is new to bass fishing comes up to me or they are taking their kid fishing and they ask me what technique out of everything would you suggest that I try, this is it right here. A wacky rig. So the wacky rig is something I kind of discovered I think when I was like, I don't know, 12 years old or something like that. And uh, a wacky rig is essentially you're taking a lot of different types of straight tail worms. This one right here is a, a stick bait. Um, it's the Z-Man Zinkers. Uh, it's full of salt. It's a little bit wider than like a traditional like finesse worms or something like that. Uh, and so it, it is able to be cast a long distance, but also uh, has a nice subtle kind of like shimmy as it falls. So it has a good fall to it. And with a wacky rig you're taking a, a worm hook like this this Hayabusa 201 um, and you're just essentially hooking it you know right through not quite the center uh, I like to to find the the little smooth collar on this see most of it has like this textured these ribs on it and then you have this uh, this smooth part right here so you know w when it comes to that collar I just kind of uh, hook it right behind 
uh, right on the edge of that smooth part towards the middle. And so you can you could do that. You can also hook it in the, in the d direct middle, but I find that that's a good balance point. But you're essentially just hooking it like that. It really doesn't look like much. Um, it doesn't really look like it would work, but the beauty about this is that it is just so absolutely simple. Uh, when you cast it out, you're supposed to fish it on a, a a pretty slack line because you want this bait to fall just perfectly um, by itself. You don't want to have any tension on the line that inhibits the, the natural kind of shimmying action as it falls down. You just want it to be able to fall on its own weight. So when you cast it out, let me see. Yeah, I'm like, I'm in the zone. I'm right in the zone here. We got all tangled. All right, so when you cast it out, essentially cast it out and then let out some line, you know, and you can have a, a bow in the line and, and you could still maybe feel the bite. But what I suggest for people that are new to this technique or for kids is to really just make sure that they're not, they don't have any tension on the line at all. They just kind of let it fall and give like a five count or something like that. Count it down and then bring it back up. And essentially all you're trying to achieve is having that bait fall on a slack line, allow it to just fall on its own weight. And then, um, you know, after it sinks a bit, just lift it back up and let it do the same thing. And the wacky rig just absolutely crushes the fish. And it's still a technique that, that I don't just use when I come to these small lakes. I actually use it on tour quite a bit when now we're on the bottom. And, uh, and especially during the spring, the spawn, this is a really killer tactic. But, you know, most of the time in these clear bodies of water, I'm just gonna, you know, let it f sink and then, and then uh, bring it up a few times. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it back in and make another cast. You know, another thing about the wacky rig is that it's really well suited for like calm conditions, especially if you're fishing out of something where you don't have a lot of boat control while you're fishing, like this rowboat here, you know, I'm not allowed to use my motor guide trolling motor or of course my Mercury engine on this, on this lake. But, um, you know, this rowboat, it gets a little bit frustrating when you're fishing a bait that requires you to literally give it no action, um, like the wacky rig. So, you know, windy conditions aren't going to be a good situation but nice calm conditions maybe in the morning or the evening that's when this is a really really good choice um, as far as the tackle that I'm going to be using with the rack, wacky rig um, and and also the Texas rig that we're going to be talking about in a minute um, both of them same setup you know you can actually use one rod and just change the baits um, again keeping it simple uh, I like to use a 7.2 medium heavy um, the Versa series rod um, the, the medium heavy 7.2 is just a really really good all around spinning rod for this style of fishing so this is a really good rod for this. Um, and then I use, you know, a, a, a stunner spinning reel. And I like to put a, a, a main line of braid. So I use um, Seaguar Smackdown braid. I like the, uh, the, the high visibility um, flash green. And uh, just so I can actually watch the line and see that, see that bite. That's especially important with the uh, wacky rig where you're putting a lot of slack in the line so you don't necessarily feel the bite, but you can see it. And then I end up putting like a 10, 15 foot fluorocarbon leader, eight or 10 pound test, depending on the situation um, and depending on how thick the cover is. Um, and uh, you know, a really good braid, again, going back to simple and also keeping it inexpensive or not braid, but fluorocarbon. Um, the the uh, Seaguar Basics that came out last year is 100% fluorocarbon for $9.99. And so this that's a, a really good value for, you know, fish in these small ponds. You don't have to get too crazy because these small ponds generally don't get a lot of pressure. And, uh, and so, you know, the fish are generally pretty willing to bite. But um, I like that basics. Um, right now I'm using the Seaguar Gold Label. A little bit more expensive. It's my favorite leader material. Um, but if you're just looking for something that's cheap, the basics is a really good one. 
but um, so anyways that's the the last component of that of course the hook that I'm using is that that Hayabusa 201 um, I like something you know that's that is like the the one aught size or something like that um, that seems to work really well but overall I don't know why I'm not catching them right now, but uh, overall the Wacky Rig is probably my favorite uh, bait to use on these small ponds. All right, so let's switch over to the other rig that I like to use on these small lakes. All right, so again, we're keeping things simple. Um, we're not even changing the, the soft plastic bait. We're still using the zinkers. Um, and uh, and the, the colors I like, I like like watermelon red or uh, California craw if the water's somewhat clear, but maybe a little bit tannic stain like this water is. And I mean, you can choose just about any color, but the reason I like the zinkers so much is that with the wacky rig, I mean, that's the deal because of the, the weight and the overall just shape shimmying action that it has with the wacky rig, but when it comes to a Texas rig, um, I want something that has a little bit of a horizontal glide to it. It doesn't just fall straight down. And if you take like an eighth ounce weight, um, this right here is an eighth ounce tungsten weight, and I peg it to the line so it stays stationary right there at the nose of the, the worm. And then you take a hook like this, um, this, 957 worm hook. This is a, like a three aught right here. If you take that and you just text rig this this um, zinkers, when you have it perfectly straight and it's it, you do a good job rigging it, um, it's different. It has a different fall than other types of worms, especially you know worms that have like a, a ribbon tail design or something. Uh, instead of like falling straight down, uh, just you know plummeting straight to the bottom. It actually has kind of a horizontal glide, almost like a tube bait or something like that. So I like to use the, the zinkers for my Texas rig too. But the Texas rig is really good for fishing a little bit deeper and a little bit thicker cover. Um, so and it's also really easy to use when the wind is up. Like the wind actually just started picking up. Uh, which is, is good to illustrate this this technique, but um, you know in those situations where you know I'm getting pushed around a little bit by the wind, and maybe it's a bright sunny day like today, I like to use the the Texas rig because um, the Texas rig you actually want to have um, a direct feel of the bait while you're fishing it. Uh, the wacky rig you want that slack in the line for it to sink by itself. The Texas rig you can have you know pressure on that line and so uh, that is more conducive for fishing in a little bit windier conditions but it, because it's weighted it also gets down to the bottom a lot faster which is super important so we're gonna get out here to this grass line and we're gonna fish it and again it's a very simple way to fish this you're not really doing anything too crazy what I am gonna do is I am going to rig up a new Zinkers real quick. I wanna try a different color. That's what I wanna do. We're gonna to go to California Craw from Watermelon Red. Watermelon Red is you know very similar to California Craw, but California Craw has got a little bit of black in it. Yeah, that wind's picking up. That wacky rig be hard to fish in this situation. All right, so with the the Texas rig, this is going to allow me to get to deeper water and be more efficient, uh, even in the wind. So, cast it out there, let it hit the bottom, and with the uh, zinkers, the zinkers because you know the the strength in its action is actually in the, that glide that it provides. There he is, got him. So that fish hit while it was on the on the fall. Feels like a good one for this lake right now. But um, it's all in that glide. They generally won't eat it on the bottom. They're generally eating it because it's gliding. And so what's probably happened now, the reason I didn't catch them on the wacky rig is because we've got so much sun and these fish really do like to hang out deep on this lake, on this grass line when it's sunny. This feels like a pretty good one. This feels like a real good one. Oh my gosh, it is a good one. 
This is one of the best fish I've caught on this lake in a while. <laughs> so we're using the same exact tackle, um, that, that eight pound test with the, you know, the braided main line, same rod, reel, everything. Again, you could use one rod for both of these techniques and then just swap out the terminal tackle. Come here, come here. <laughs> Check that one out. That's the biggest one I've caught since I've been here this year. Now, I've caught bigger fish here on this lake. Uh, I caught a, a, an eight pound, 10 ouncer here once, uh, and that's definitely not an eight pound, 10 ouncer, but that's like a three and three quarter. That's actually a really good fish for this lake. But that was, that was fun. Let's put him back. All right, that was that was fun and unexpected, to be honest. Um, but there you go. I mean, the Texas rig it just allows you to to really just fish a whole different part of of these lakes, you know. And sometimes, you know, these fish are, are they even though there's not a lot of pressure on a lot of these small lakes. They, the shoreline and the shallower depths do get pressured more for sure. And so sometimes, you know, going a little bit deeper or into thicker cover is the deal. And that's, that's where, you know, a simple Texas rig like this works. And, you know, fishing the, the um, Texas rig, you know, if you're fishing a, a worm that is maybe just a straight tail, like finesse worms or, or, you know, a worm that has like a ribbon tail design to it, you can fish it a little bit slower. I'm kind of fishing it pretty aggressively where I'm hopping it real fast off the bottom because I'm using the zinkers and that has that kind of glide and I just am essentially just trying to hop it up so it can glide back down and that seems to be the best way for for me to get strikes with this particular you know worm that I'm using there he is right there but you know you can you can slow it down try different things oh that's another nice one Not a great big one, but man, you know, we tried the wacky rig, but really all it took was to go a little bit deeper with the Texas rig, but sometimes it's the exact opposite. Sometimes like I need to go shallow and start casting on these flats or around, you know, um, isolated cover and with the wacky rig. And, and sometimes it's all about going deep, fishing the weed lines, but man, keeping it simple, getting bit nothing better <laughs> all right that was awesome well anyways guys um i just wanted to real quick do this video kind of outlining two of the techniques that i've really whittled my arsenal down to when i want to keep things simple on these small bodies of water these little ponds uh, maybe i'm taking kids fishing uh, you know people new to the sport any of that these are two techniques that you can go out and catch fish right away and they're probably going to end up being your favorites just like they are for me out on these small lakes but anyways I want to hear in the in the comments below uh, what techniques you like to throw when you're going to your favorite little small pond or you know small lake um, and uh, what techniques you like to throw when you're you're taking a kid fishing um, but anyways guys thank you so much for watching these videos if you did like this video make sure you like share subscribe and I'm gonna see you out on the water maybe in this rowboat <laughs>